Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, and in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a vector bunny in Illustrator. Select the rectangle tool, click and hold shift to draw a square. Hold alt or option and drag to duplicate the selected object. And to adjust the size of your shapes, just hover over the sides and corners, click and drag and repeat the process until you get something that looks like this. Now using the rotate tool, click on an anchor point to pivot around and extend, and then grab the ellipse tool to create that first eye, and then use that cheeky duplication shortcut to create the second. Next, select the polygon tool and create a shape with three sides. Well, hey, we have a triangle. Position said triangle between the two eyes centrally and a little bit underneath. This is going to be the nose. Next, we're going to jump back to the ellipse tool and we're going to start creating the hat. And at this point, I'm going to select everything, select the fill color and set this to none. Next, I'm going to select the stroke, give this a black color, double click the swatch and check global. Click OK. And then from the stroke panel, we can increase the stroke weight and just thicken this up a little bit. You can jump into outline mode with command or control Y, which is essentially a wireframe view of your design. And you can see I'm just repeating that duplication shortcut and then using the rectangle tool to start to build out the rest of the hat. Now the hat is definitely one of the trickier parts if you are new to Illustrator, but essentially what I'm doing here is adding some fill colors to the main body of the hat. And then I'm going to select the very top ellipse and I'm going to give this a fill color and just make sure that it is brought to the front so it sits on top of everything else. And I'm now going to add a global swatch for the main body of the bunny. This allows me to edit this color from the swatches panel rather than updating every single instance of that color manually on the artboard. And now I'm just taking a moment to finesse this particular color. And in a second, I'm going to also start picking some other swatches with colors that are complementary to the first one. And I'll just apologize in advance. I do take quite a while picking my colors, but hey, you've probably got enough time to go and get a cup of tea or maybe have a biscuit. Okay, so when you're finally, finally happy with your colors, click OK. And I'm now going to start applying color to the rest of the design. So we have the eyes, we have the nose, and next I'm going to start creating the mouth. Now you can use the pen tool to create custom shapes yourself, or you can use the ellipse tool, apply a stroke, remove the fill, and then use the direct selection tool to select the top anchor point and then hit delete or backspace to remove. This will leave you with a half circle as you can see here. And I'm then going to use the scissor tool to make a slight cut just inside the edge so the mouth isn't a complete semicircle and I'm just fine tuning this shape. I'm then duplicating this to the other side and then I will use the pen tool holding shift to just draw a straight line to connect this to the nose. And you can see the right side of the mouth is a bit wonky so from the property inspector I can flip this around horizontally and then just move that into the middle so they are symmetrical. Okay, time for a nifty trick. With the main selection tool, you can select any object. Press A on the keyboard to switch to the direct selection tool, and you can click on these circular handles just inside the edge and use these to round off the corners. Now you can do this on individual corners, or you can hold shift and select multiple corners and round these off together. And I'm just gonna make the face a little bit taller by using the direct selection tool to select these top two anchor points, hold shift and drag these up to connect them to the ears. Now I'm also going to select the pieces of the mouth and from the stroke panel, change the cap type to rounded, just to round them off a little bit. And you can see here, I'm just thickening up that stroke ever so slightly and then using that same rounding corners technique just to round off the nose. This next step is really simple. So I'm going to create some more ellipses with the ellipse tool, of course, fill these with white, no stroke and use these to create the whites of the eyes. And again, I'm using the direct selection tool to adjust the overall size and position of some of the facial features. You can keep your stroke weights all the same, or you can vary them just to add a little bit of diversity. It's entirely up to you. Now we're using the rectangle tool to create the teeth and the direct selection tool just to bring in those bottom two anchor points. And for this next step, this was a little bit tricky. So I needed to make the top of the teeth match the curvature of the mouth, essentially so I can apply a fill 
to the teeth. Now I kind of fudged this a little bit as you'll see with the pen tool and the add anger point tool. Now there's definitely cleaner implementations of this, a whole bunch of different ways that you could create this same effect, but this for whatever reason is what I did in this tutorial. But hey, it works. And you can see I'm using the direct selection tool to adjust the anchor points and the handles to adjust the curvature of the lines. So now that's finally successfully done, we can apply the white fill and then I can just fine tune this a bit further with the direct selection tool. Okay, so now we're going back to the hat. I'm going to duplicate the top, scale it up slightly, select the stroke and then make this red. And with the direct selection tool, select that top anchor point, hit delete or backspace and then thicken up this stroke ever so slightly. Next, with the red line selected, we can go up to Object and Expand to confirm those changes. This is now a regular old shape and we can change the fill color of this shape and then create some more rectangles like so. We're going to position these either side and merge them together with a compound path by going to Object, Compound Path, Make. And we can then select all of the red shapes and use the Pathfinder panel to knock the top out of the bottom. And I'm just going to fine tune my design by making some minor adjustments to the position of some of the facial features. And then I'm going to zoom in and grab the pen tool and use this to create a custom three-sided shape that is going to act as a shadow for the right ear. So I can set the stroke to none and then pick a color ever so slightly darker than the main body color of the bunny. And I'm now going to grab that rectangle tool and create a square that is the same width and height as the artboard. Go to Object, Arrange, send this to the back and then go and change that color or pick a color swatch from the swatches panel. Something similar to my bunny here in this example, maybe slightly lighter. And then I'm going to lock the background so I don't move it by mistake. And when you're happy with absolutely everything, drag over everything to select, go to Object, Expand, Expand everything. We can then go back up to object and group it all together. And there we go, we're done. We have created a vector bunny rabbit. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you did enjoy it. Take care and I'll see you next time.